Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. Uh, I have a great guest today, but I want to remind you guys before we get started, go over and subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. We love it when we hear from you guys and you tell us what you love about the podcast and, and that you're listening. So get it downloaded directly every week. So a couple months ago, I had Jackie Lapin on kind of a funny story. We were introduced uh, from a mutual friend of ours talking about speaker tunity. You have to hear about this. And then I happened to sit next to her at lunch at an event about two weeks ago, and I found out she does something book related. So I wanted to bring her back and for you guys to hear what she's up to. So if you haven't listened to the other episode, Jackie Lapin is a leader in helping authors, coaches, speakers, health practitioners, and entrepreneurs connect with their followers all over the globe. For the past 10 years, her internationally acclaimed conscious companies have been providing PR campaigns, radio media, tours, speaking engagements to support growth and revenue for change makers. Uh, her clients have included Don McGill Ruiz. That's a really amazing book. That, that's the four agreements, right? It is. Yes. Oh, wow. Dr. Joe Vitale, James Twyman, Denise Lynn, Ariel Ford, Hay House, and more. She is the founder of Speaker Tunities. And if you want to uh, find out more about that particular platform that she has, I encourage you to go listen to that episode. Um, and she provides leaders on a region, regional basis with contacts for hundreds of speaking opportunities in their individual market at the touch of their fingertips. These purchasable geocentric lists enable speakers to have massive impact in their regions and to select directories for other regions where they want to connect with clients. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> Jackie, I found out for all of you authors out there, actually has something called Conscious Media Relations for podcast and radio tours. And the cool thing when I was talking to her, and we're going to talk about this a lot today, is that she guarantees a certain number when you have the done for you. And you guys, if you have ever hired anybody in the PR industry, you're going to pay a whole bunch of money and you get no guarantees. So I think this is really amazing for the book world. So welcome, Jackie. Oh, Julia, thank you for having me. And thank you for that lovely testimonial. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're fantastic. I was so glad I, I connected with you at the event because we had only collected, connected online before and you're even lovelier in person than, than you were you are online. So remember that, you guys, you need to connect with her because she's even lovelier. Um, so how did you get into this? I know, you know, 10 years ago, this was really a big thing. You could book people on the blog tours, the podcast tours, different things like that with your books. But there were, there were no appreciative results. Like they didn't guarantee that, that you would even get on podcasts. And, and sometimes when they did, they weren't really quality. Well, I think you have to understand the, the story of how I got to where I was. Um, I first became one of the first women sports writers in America. So writing is in my craft. Um, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So did you get to go in the locker room and see all those bare athletic butts running around? Was so early, I actually got locked out of the ballpark. Oh, what a bummer. My story waiting for <laughs> Reggie Jackson. Yes, it was a fun time. But um, the people who followed me I actually got that opportunity. Um, and then uh, from there, and I, and I made national television. I was at the Detroit Free Press and the Washington Post and on the front pages of the LA Times. From there, I went on to have one of the largest sports special and cable TV PR agencies in America, which meant that I was working with a world-class client list. Everybody from the National Hockey League to Toyota Motorsports to the Golf Channel to Avon Seagram's um, Showtime. I can go on and on and on. Um, and the last thing I did was launch the worldwide poker phenomenon with the world poker tour that may be on my epitaph actually. Um, but it sort of, as that was all winding down, uh, the media was really changing and it wasn't, it was contracting and it was harder to get uh, all the kinds of things that we traditionally gotten newspaper, magazines, uh, television. And I wrote two books in personal growth because I was called to write those books. 
And the first one it was called The Art of Conscious Creation came out right about the time The Secret did. And I started building my media list for my own book. And of course I knew how to do this, but and at that time, the only thing that really had been done by publicists was broadcast radio. But I'm seeing this emerging field of internet radio and I started data mining for that in my subject matter. So by the time I wrote my second book, which was called um, Practical Con Conscious Creation, Daily Techniques to Manifest Your Desires, and was voted the best spiritual book at the International New Age Trade Show that year, I had built a very substantial list of over a thousand radio shows and podcasts. That was just, I mean, it was actually before podcasts. It was just radio and internet radio. But these radio shows were hungry for content that had to do with personal growth, wellness, um, uh, health, uh, conscious business, living a good life in any way, shape, or form, and improving the, 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 the status of, of us humans and the planet. So when I got done with doing that, I'm looking at it thinking, well, you know, I, I, that group of media, the mainstream, is putting up big roadblocks. But these guys are saying, what do you got for me now? I want more, I want more, I want more. And I thought, why not just feed this pipeline of people that are anxious for this kind of content? And so that's when I thought, well, if I built this list for myself, then other people could benefit from me building this list. So that's when I decided to shift over, rebrand as Conscious Media Relations. And so I have two brands in my life, which is Conscious Media Relations, which is the done for you services, and then Speakertunity, which is the do it yourself services. But under Conscious Media Relations, we decided that what we could really, how we could really help authors and leaders was by applying, writing a really compelling pitch letter, which is what I've been doing all my life, and sending it to the media on this direct, uh, this list that we have created, this proprietary list. Now, in the interim, that list has grown substantially. First of all, it's about 4,000 just interested in those topics that I was talking to you about. Then we've got about another 3,000 podcasts in various different categories. And we have 3,500 general morning drive and general talk shows. And then we have specialty lists. So we have a business list. And now we've also got a new directory of 6,000 business podcasts on top of that. So we have a business list. We have a parenting list. We have moms, I mean, um, uh, uh, women's. We've got um paranormal we've got 200 paranormal shows oh wow um we've got um uh i'm just trying to think of some of the other specialties you know uh health and wellness uh but it, you know we collect uh different categories so that when the book the right book comes in we can feed the right audience that pitch so, but at any given time when we're actually pitching for one of our shows, we read, you know, we read, write the, write the pitch, read, I read the book, write the pitch. We then send it to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts at this time, continues to grow. And then um, when I, my, my scheduler, Missy picks it up from there and she handles all the scheduling, but you know, we're, we're a team that works really closely together. And so whenever we're promoting an author and their book, we make sure that a massive number of people get it. And it's the, you know, people who might very well be interested. And like you, you said, out as, as these programs evolved, we were pretty, pretty damn confident that we can get a minimum of 30 interviews with every author. And Depending on what the book is, depending on how compelling it is, depending how unique it is, because if it sounds like a lot of other books, um, it, it'll get, you know, the, the low end of the, you know, get 30, 35, 34, you know, right. maybe 40. But if it's really different, unique and compelling, it can get up to 75 or 80. So, and that's what we've been doing the last 10 years. Um, and we continue to do them. We've just launched... We've just launched two already. This is January. We're launching two more in the next two weeks. And I suspect that we're going to be talking to a lot of other people in the next several weeks uh, to na nail down some several more. In 2018, we did 25 of them. 
Wow. Um, and, um, and so we'd like to keep those numbers continuing, but we're the only game in town that specializes in radio and podcast and the whole self-help spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, nobody else does what we do. And you can find individual agencies are going to go out and they're going to pick individual people and they're going to pitch them one-on-one. -on -one. That's not what we do. We cast a wide net and we find who's interested and then hook them up with the author. That is incredible. So we're talking about non, I'm sorry, yeah, nonfiction books, right? Correct. Okay. There is good. not much we can do with fictions books at this point. There's not a lot of shows that will take those folks on. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Fiction is, I started out a fiction writer and it's a much difficult, uh, there's, it's, it's much harder to get visibility with a fiction book. It, it really, really is, especially since even the traditional publishers don't really promote them much when they take them on. So it yeah, that's, be. that's a better, that's a social media a book club and, um, uh, online uh, uh, organizations like Goodreads and stuff. That's really where you need to be promoting those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about, I, I know you said what kinds, like what kinds of books do you guys look for when you, because obviously you have to be choosy um, or your sources, you know, you're sending out 9,000. They don't want to get inundated every day. What kind of really great books do you look for to do this with? Well, I like something that's really different and unique when possible. Um, I just did a book for a colleague of mine uh, who owns a wolf sanctuary um, here in Southern California. But like they do with horses, they do therapeutic work with, um, with you, disadvantaged youth who've had problems in their lives working with the wolves. Okay. um in a in a therapeutic program and it, it and it really ha is transformative but it's not just youth i mean he, the book covered you know the, the 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 history of the wolf and how its relation to human beings goes way back and why that therapeutic relationship works and how much like wolves we are and it was really a very very fascinating book that was so unique and so different i think we pulled in 75 or 80 just the first week that just wow. the first week because it was so unique and different so obviously that's a boon when it's when it's different but the book needs to first of all not be an ebook it needs to be a physical book 85 to 90 percent of these hosts want something in their hands to read mm -hmm. it also needs to be of a substantially decent size i mean it can't be a pamphlet that's you know 60 pages mm -hmm. um it, it has to have some heft to it. Now, it, that doesn't mean that it needs to be, you know, in big, big letters and just fleshed out to, it needs to be, it needs to take, really provide valuable information and have a point of view that's unique and different. Um, and one of the things that I do, I pride myself on being able to find some way to make each book unique and different. I mean, obviously, I get a lot of books about, you know, living a happier life, um, manifesting, all of those kinds of things. Um, and um, it, it, if I can find a way to either call on that person's history to, to make it unique um, or a, a particular uh, aspect of the book that makes it different, then I will do that. Uh, because I don't want any book to sound the same like any other book. It's got to it's got to reflect the personality and and the mission and the and the message of that author in a special and unique way. But the the best books are are things that do not say the same thing over and over and over again that are is already in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we can't find something unique and special in somebody's book and bring it forward. Uh, even if it's in a common genre. Right. And it also helps if it's relevant, if it's something that is being talked about mm. right now too, I, uh, in my opinion. Well, and we did a book on the um, vaccine controversy. Mm. Oh, wow. Um, that was just incredibly fascinating um, and uh, illuminating. It definitely changed my vision of, the 
the controversy and which side I'm on. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when we put that book out, we got a flood of interviews, and a lot of them were really national play players, and not, you know, and that was a significant uh, boom to that book. The, the uh, um, publisher said that we helped make it the number two book of their year. Oh, that's fantastic. All right. And traditionally published or self-published? It was hybrid published. Ah, okay. So in, in that meaning that it's um, the traditional published quality, but it was handled um, by a, an intermediary um, and the author paid to, to have it done. Right. Um, is there a preference to what you take, traditional or self-published? No, not at all. As long as the quality of the book is good. Um, and what's nice about it is the hosts don't care either. As long as the information is good, and that leads to another point, it doesn't need to be a new book. As long as we can make it sound unique and different, it doesn't matter that it, it came out a year ago or two years ago. Um, as long as we're kind of, you know, uh, creating the buzz that will help that author drive their business. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 that becomes much more of a factor when you're talking about mainstream media. For example, the national te televisions won't touch you unless you're published by a national uh, traditional publishing company. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Uh, but, but with radio and podcasts, they're open to whatever it is, as long as the content is good. Oh, very, very good. Um, what else should I be asking here? I feel like we covered a lot in a really quick amount of time. <laughs> Um, we actually do two different, three different programs so that people have a concept. One is where we do everything soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing is one, the, it's very interactive. We log all the information into a shared Google Doc um, with all the data on the host and the show and who's making the phone call, et cetera. And then the author actually does the booking themselves and the reminder email to the host. And the last one is where we write the pitch, uh, read the book, write the pitch, and send it from the author's email, and then they're solely responsible for all of the fire hose of responses that come back, and they have to sort through them and get all the additional information. So there's different prices based on how much work, but the other factor is you need to have a media kit with this. Yeah, of and, course. Um, and the media kit needs to have these things in it, a, a release on the book, a... Um, a full bio on you, who are you, and what is your business, and why are you doing what you're doing. Then a short version that's called the on-air introduction that's four to five paragraphs. Mm -hmm. um, then, and here's the most important thing, 20 questions. In the old days, 10 questions was enough when it was on broadcast radio and you're on for 10 minutes. Now you're on for an hour and you need to give these hosts plenty of questions right. uh, in the order you want them to be asked. And then when we do the media kit, which our authors have the option to have us do for uh, an additional small fee, um, is that we do what we call the learn more page. That's how the public can engage with you. So that is, um, and, and it's in bullet points. So it's the book and where it's available, um, then the, any, what, what is the offer, author offering? Is it there a freebie? Is there a e-course? Is there a private coaching? Whatever the op, upsell is, mm -hmm. um, maybe even their speaking opportunities where you can find and contact them for speaking. Uh, then all their social media contact and their website. So all of that gets packaged up. So, and it looks attractive. And one of the reasons that we do the media kit in the way, very specific way that we do, is it solves all those problems of the host coming back and saying, well, do you have questions? Oh, well, do you have this? Can, can I have a bio this way? Can I, we just give it to them in a way that's instantly digestible for them and they don't come back with those kinds of questions anymore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, one of the things we pride ourselves on is making it so easy that, you know, basically the author is, can sit back and take, you know, just um, never have to leave their home and do a slate of interviews. And these interviews will stretch out anywhere from three to five months, um, you know, beyond the, you know, the initial period. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes, you know, people are already booked and they keep going. So, um, so it gives you a full slate. You're not going to be inundated that first week and have to do them all like you used to do in the 
broadcast world where they'd sit you in a room and then you do all your interviews in two days and you're done. This will stretch out and it works around your schedule. So if you're going away for two weeks, it gets booked around your schedule. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very interactive process because we want to make sure that the author is um, getting the most out of the experience and the hosts are getting the most out of the experience. And um, we really make sure that all the pieces are in the puzzle. And the way that we do it is so detailed that very, very, there are limited opportunities for the ball to drop, but it does, it does. And we always, you know, reschedule and do all that. But, you know, sometimes there's technical issues. Sometimes somebody accidentally missed the, issue, the interview, whether it's the author or the host. Um, some, well, we've got one client we just did a work, we've been working with in uh, Lebanon, whose interviews have been interacted by the sound of gunfire and oh. um, the unrest that's going on in that country. So you just never know. And right. then, of course, if you're somewhere in Australia, and, and most of our interviews are uh, U U.S. and Canada, but if you're in Australia and you're doing a radio tour, that means you're going to get up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. and you know, you're going to have to make sure that you have a phone number that is two way from U.S., which you can do on Skype. Um, and, you know, you got to be able to do Zoom and all of those other kinds of things. Some of the times we find that people are still, some of the older authors are still a little edgy when it comes to, um, to Zoom. Uh, but we're, we get them up to speed. And we do, one of the things we do is a tracking document briefing so that everybody involved in the process can see what's going on. And let's say the author is, you know, gets up in the middle of the night and think, oh my goodness, I've got an interview at seven o'clock tomorrow and I don't remember what the telephone number was. I didn't put it in my, my calendar or whatever. Mm -hmm. They can go onto the Google Doc and see it right there. There's no mysteries. They don't have to get a hold of the, you know, Missy in the middle of the night to do it. Everything's available for everybody. And if you're working with we work a lot of times we also work in concert with other publicists mm -hmm. so because we have a specialty in what we do and they're doing other things so we we play well with others um that's one of the <laughs> things we like for example and we work a lot with publishers either for them um we've worked with hay house and new world library and sounds true and red wheel wiser and hci books and you know, a number of others. Uh, we just did a book for um, and, and, uh, for Simon and Schuster. Um, so um, either directly for the 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 publisher themselves, or the author will have us coordinate with their publisher. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that works. Another thing that you might want to talk about, Julia, is um, people say, "Well, what's the timetable on this?" When we do, the, we don't. We do not do this to fill your pre-order calendar doesn't work that way you know of sales for of the, what we do we will only trigger this when we have 50 books in hand or you have 50 books in hand or we prefer not to work to, to have the publisher send but in some places that that's unavoidable mm -hmm. but um but um we want to be able to when we trigger it we want the host to be able to have the book in a couple of days, read the book, and then within two or three weeks, actually implement the interview. Um, and so to do that, you know, either the publisher has to get us or you guys have to order from, the author needs to order from uh, Kindle and have them available. Um, and that way also when the interviews are going on, if somebody is motivated and excited, they can go straight to Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever it is and order the book right then, mm -hmm. as opposed to pre-order and they kind of go, like, oh, now I got to wait for the thing. Yeah. So, um, so that's kind of it. And I always need, because I am doing um, multiple things in the world, I speak, as you know, and, and go to a lot of conferences. Um, I need to have time on weekends to read a book. So sometimes it may be a month or two before we actually trigger it that I actually need that book so that I can get time in to actually read it, digest it, write the pitch, uh, if I'm doing the media kit, et cetera, et cetera. So mm -hmm. people need to plan ahead and we do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I want to get people on that calendar in advance so that we don't give their date away and make sure that we know what's coming up and we plan for it and we schedule for it. So those are just kind of the things. And um, you, had, you had said to me that you um, 
might want me to talk about some of the individual books that we we have done. Yeah, we can talk about that. I want to go back to the media kit for a minute, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you guys, I cannot even stress how important this is. As as someone who is a podcast host, if you send me these things piecemeal, <laughs> I may uninvite you because you just proved to me that you are not a professional and I want really quality people. So I really do stress and I recommend all my authors have it on their websites as well. So if you have a website, get up a tab with the media, all of your interviews there, because one of the other things people want to know is how you present yourself on air. So if you have other interviews, definitely get them on that media kit so that people can see you know, what it, you can be really talented, but if you don't look credible in an interview, you're done. <laughs> well, you know, and one of the things we do on our tracking documents is there's a whole column just for recording the link from those interviews. Mm -hmm. So that the author can go back at any time and grab that and say, oh, I want to go on this on my website. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make sure that you have all the value out of this that's going to increase your business. That's really great. Yeah. So what, what kind of results do you guys get from this? Cause that's something I, you know, I see from authors, they're like, Oh my God, I've tried everything. You know, what is going to get, what is going to get me results? What, what kinds of, you know, test, not testimonials, but case studies do you have? Well, um, you know, I talked a little bit about that one book on, um, on the vaccine conference controversy. We did another book for, um, a, a a um, leader and author who for sounds true which talked about the what this uh, this author learned from people who were centenarians hundred year old people about staying healthy mm -hmm. and that wasn't the total content of the book but that's what we led with and um, we also made that book the, one of their top sellers of the year um, I just had an author who did uh, two books on the legends of Celtic goddesses and uh, and and um, women figures in the Celtic tradition, um, and she said she got on one interview that where she had seven hundred downloads. Wow, so, that's a big topic right now, though. I think a lot of people are really interested, especially without is it Outlander. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Outlander. Like it's a really interesting topic, <laughs> and she's really an expert in this area and has two great award-winning books in them. She actually said that we helped make her book even a bigger award winner. Um, and so those are samples. But here's what I tell people because I'm going to be all honest with folks. I can't always tell you how many books we're going to sell because there's a lot of factors involved in that. What I can tell you is we can give you hundreds, if not millions of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of ears to change lives that we know we can guarantee. Yeah. It's um, always, it, oh, sorry. I didn't mean yeah, to. Go ahead. It's always very tough when people ask like, you know, what can you do for me? Here's something I can't even stress enough too. You have to participate as the author. <laughs> yes. You can't just say here, go promote me. It doesn't work like that. You have to be visible. And I actually find this uh, so much with authors. They have this, I want to be like really well known. I want to be a celebrity, but I don't want anybody to see me. <laughs> Yeah, and it, exactly. It's so wild sometimes. It's like, wait a minute. Well, and to that topic, I would say that 25, minimum 25, if not 50% of our interviews these days are being done over Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and um, many, many of the interviews that you will do today are video casts because they're going to be on Facebook Live, they're going to be on Zoom, they're going to be on YouTube, they're going to be any number of other places. So make sure, and we, we always always make this distinction, whether this is an audio interview or a video interview, so that you don't show up in your PJs uh, for yes. an, a, a video interview. In fact, I have a way of color coding on my calendar. If I'm doing an interview that I have to wear makeup for, it is coded <laughs> in red. 
<laughs> I feel so honored you wore makeup for me today. I've had to every day this week and it's awful because normally I would be in my yoga pants and no makeup working if I don't have to. I don't care about my clients. You can see me that way. It's the real me, but yeah, you can't when you're on camera. <laughs> Yeah. So don't be surprised. In other words, exactly. You need to know one way or the other. And you'd be surprised how many people do come on and then they, they realize they're on zoom and they go, Oh gosh, I, and I have to give them five minutes to go put makeup on. So yeah. come prepared, please come prepared. So Jackie, how do we get a hold of you? If we want to find out more about this to, to move forward or at least discuss it with you and find out which one of those packages is best for you. Well, they can reach out to me at Jackie at ConsciousMediaRelations.com. Um, if you want to just take a quick look at the website, it's got a lot of stuff on there, but the, there's only two services that we really are ongoing doing, which is the radio podcaster. We also syndicate articles to a database of 1,500 mind, body, spirit, print, and online media. Those are the two signature services. So you go to ConsciousMediaRelations.com. But if you want to see those testimonials that I've been talking about, and, they, uh, and we're pretty proud of them, you go to ConsciousMediaRelations.com and look for the Raves tab. And yes. you'll see you know, many, many, many testimonials by leading figures uh, and first-time authors um, that had this as, as an experience that they really felt that gave them a significant boost. So we're very proud of our track record. We've been doing this a long time. You know, we've, we've outlasted a lot of other folks in the industry. Um, and there are some people that if you just want podcasts and they call, you know, and, and you want to just have them pinpoint it, that's fine. But we, we are a specialty. We, we call ourselves agnostic about platform. As long as this show really loves this kind of content, uh, we want to make sure that we reach out to them. So that's what's really important. And by the way, we always are always updating our list. So we, we add uh, probably 200, 100, 100 to 150 shows every month to these, nice. uh, these nice. lists. Because so. there's more and more coming out every day. Thank you very much. So appreciate you coming today. Oh, Julia, thank you for letting me talk about this. It's so fun. <laughs> but authors are our favorite people. We love, love doing these. So thank you for letting me talk to, the, to your community about the work we do.